the focus of today's talk is <coughs> a concept that's somewhat of a Stanford Tesla secret regarding Tesla energy. And what we contend is if things work as planned, the energy business actually is larger than the auto business, meaning that instead of a 3000 by 2025, we can expect Tesla to enter 6,000 a share by this time because of what's going on in the energy space. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you'd like some tips on better investing and trading in Tesla, particularly heading into this important period when we'll have numbers by the 1st of October, please join us on Patreon. At the higher levels, we operate every day, including classes as well as shows that you do not get on the main channel. I also want to remind you that this is a copyrighted broadcast and uh, I want to thank uh, all of you who have made comments that we don't need to copyright and that's why we have large numbers of other channels uh, with folks that don't know anything that are copying our material, hence all rights are reserved and it's copyrighted and you lose your channel if you screw around and keep taking our material. So I um, have been kind of focused on Tesla energy of late. And the reason is obviously Tesla announced that it, it was starting a process of applying to actually start doing power. And they've stated that their initial customer base would be targeting their current owners of vehicles. Now, in general, this is a good idea. I spent a couple of hours uh, this weekend talking with one of our show advisors, a PhD. His PhD is from uh, Georgia Tech, but I was giving him a hard time because we call him a MITFID, uh, which is a PhD from MIT where he went to undergrad. And so the gist of the conversation was just to look at, well, how is Tesla going to do power in the manner that in general was described for every other power company? In essence, what you do is you go find a, produ a producer of power, you buy energy, and then you service the client base that you've developed. The challenge with this basic process is there's no competitive advantage uh, that you might offer to your customers versus others if you're buying from the same source, producing energy, and then selling it to your customers. So, and then obviously there are some issues. It's a fairly deregulated market. There's some issues with um, the fact that Tesla or Texas enjoys its deregulated environments uh, in this process. So the next data point in this whole process is that the chief technical or former chief technical officer uh, of Tesla, J.B. Stroibel, indicated that it was his opinion on numerous occasions that Tesla's energy business would end up being multiple times larger than its automotive business. And so after he stated this numerous times, he actually failed to articulate why exactly he thought this might occur. So as I was searching around for the answer to this question as Tesla is entering this business in Texas, I believe we've come up with the answer to this mystery between J.B. Storbel and the reality that he said would be occurring for Tesla, and I think it'll happen by 2025. And what that, the answer to it is what's called time shifting. Very simple concept, somewhat hard to do. So what happened is that I was working on a project at Stanford, and what happened is there's a friend of mine whose father gave him a beer distribution business based in the San Francisco area, it's in South San Francisco, called Krissa Imports. And so he and I were having a conversation about the problems he was having with beer distribution. Namely, when you go to um, a beer facility, let's say it's a, a brewery type of restaurant, they have a whole bunch of beers on tap. And pretty much what happens is that 
sort of nightly, they put in orders and those orders uh, refill those beers that have been sold. Well, he posed a question which was, is there a way to keep track of uh, the beer that was sold and have the taps in essence reporting to his company so that they could have um, the trucks hitting those places where they're running dry rather than having to wait until after they run out and now that tap will be down for a day maybe two or three until distribution can get to them to replace that beer so there are a lot of ideas we played around with how to solve this and and one of them was simply to put a donut underneath each of the uh the um sort of kegs and then what would happen is as the weight of the keg declined you could simply um, deal with it that way. It, it turns out that the problem that was presented after I started pulling together solutions, he sort of bailed on uh, the solution that we provided and it somewhat was a waste of time. Part of this effort, I had a conversation with a professor at Stanford in the civil engineering department and he referenced me to a fairly new member of the department who was a PhD from Cal Berkeley and we talked about the problem and he said, well, it'd be pretty easy to have a solution put together. Probably one of our grad students could knock it out quickly. So it wasn't really straight computer science. It wasn't really civil engineering. I was surprised that it was something that could be handled within that department. So um, after we finished that up, I asked him a very simple question. And this is six years ago now. And the simple question was, well, what are you working on? And he said, we're working on time shifting of electricity. So I looked at him, I thought about what he said, and I was like thinking to myself, you're nuts. There's no way. And so let's review what time shifting is and therefore my reaction and why I think we are where we are now. And that is that if you look around the world, around the country, the price of electricity from seven in the morning to seven at night is a certain price point from 7 p.m. at night until 7 a.m. is what's called off-peak pricing and theoretically that's at least half if not less by a wide margin than that number. So what he so the general idea is that if you could figure out some way to time shift electricity you can now offer your customers um, off-peak uh, prices on power, but during peak periods. And after he said this to me, I looked at him and I was like, uh, okay, you know, it's clearly a great idea. Clearly, if you offered a significant discount on what customers are paying during the regular day, you're going to pick up a ton of customers. So there's no absolute doubt about that. The problem though is practically how can you do something like that? And so that's kind of where we're at in this conversation right now. And so the answer we're coming up to J.B. Stroibel's uh, comments is exactly that, is that these guys have figured out how to shift time. And with that time shift capability, it's revolutionary and they can have as many customers as they want in that situation. Now, to some extent, we're kind of seeing this right now because that's what the mega packs are all about at the corporate customer level and, and also at some utilities that are installing it this for a portion of their grids. They're in essence loading these batteries up at night with cheaper electricity and then during the day, particularly um, in something called the duck curve, um, they're distributing the power from the batteries instead of using peaker plants. So. What is the duck curve? As you may recall, what happens is if you have an area that has a large amount of solar power produced from solar panels on the homes of individuals, what tends to happen is um, there's a peak of power production that happens in that 12 to one o'clock range. But starting around 2 p.m., the amount of power from the solar uh, on these homes starts declining all the way to 5 p.m. So there's kind of an up and then there's a down. 
The problem you have though, is that most people get home at around five. So between five and seven, they have a peak problem where there isn't enough solar coming from the uh, solar panels on people's homes, but the power is needed by people who've gotten home and are using everything within their home relative to appliances, etc. So we now have this problem of, well, how do you deal with that? The answer could be using peaker plants um, that are natural gas or even uh, coal or uh, some other fuel, but these plate tank, uh, machines take time to spin up and you may not be for sure how much electricity that is. And that's one of the reasons why Tesla's batteries are being used to be a stopgap uh, at this time so that you now ha get back into the post 7 p.m. time period where fewer people are using heavy amounts of electricity and then you keep doing this cycle uh, day over day again. So Tesla has installed systems like this all over the world, particularly Australia where the largest ones are right now. But there's a lot of orders in for Tesla. Their backlog at least a year on customers ordering those products. So what's fascinating here and why I think this could double Tesla's stock price is that, you know, one, how many cus uh, competitors do they have in this space? There are definitely cons competitors. Two, how big a footprint do those competitors have compared to Tesla in terms of delivering this solution globally? Um, and the answer is there are competitors, but not that many and not at Tesla's size with a global footprint. So an interesting thing will emerge, um, which is if Tesla is able to shift time in this fashion, they could basically do a 50% cut or more for customers on a daily basis and log these customers in for multiple years, maybe more, and the customers are happy because they're cutting their production costs. And obviously Tesla's has happy because they're generating a lot more revenue in the process. And the other great thing about this is that, you know, like one of the islands in Hawaii is a Tesla customer where they're generating solar or generating energy by both solar and wind. And so that combination helps address the fact that the sun isn't always shining or the wind isn't always working. But if you have uh, both working, you can kind of work, you know, get the whole thing to work. So we wanted to bring this up today because I have sort of fun poking at Kathy Woods because Kathy was saying 3,000 a share for Tesla by 2025. If, and I believe they do have it, um, Tesla has taken a Stanford patent in this space and is able to shift time on electricity, there's no doubt that their um, power business in this regard will actually become bigger than the car business. And it can get there a lot faster because you just install mega pack situations that take 60 days to install, 90 days to install. And you could sort of start by picking off large corporate customers who have big power bills that they want to cut and make more money. And then you sort of roll this uh, out perhaps to municipalities, et cetera, afterwards. And particularly with Tesla's or, or the power issues that have occurred in te Texas, there's a lot of corporate customers, hospitals and other places that power is critical and they can't afford to be down as they were this past winter. Another reason to choose to do this in Texas is that um, the volume of re regulation in most parts of the country is, is actually quite onerous and takes a long time to get through all these places. So really test Texas is an excellent test case because Tesla can provide its own power through uh, purchases or by producing its own by wind or, or solar and then supplement it in other ways. But the general point is that um, it is not an idle threat from Tesla's CTO that the power business ends up being bigger than the auto business. Final note I'll remind you of is that one of the problems people are having right now with assessing the value of Tesla is that you can count the cars being sold but Elon doesn't easily break out the revenue that's being generated from the power side of the business. So as a result for this quarter, 
we actually saw some a nice bump in earnings and revenue, but he tagged on uh, the power business uh, numbers sort of surreptitiously, so it's harder to see how and when it hits. But the net effect was it raised the average sales of Tesla vehicle uh, prices by a known 3,000 per vehicle, but it, you know it could actually be more for this quarter depending on uh, how much uh, you know they're doing in that solar business for the firm. So I would say this is pretty exciting stuff. And I think that, um, you know, it's a new space for Tesla to keep an eye on, which is then there's no way that the power business should be bigger than the car business um, from obvious sources. But as you start getting into the whole mega pack business, and you just pick off huge numbers of heavy electricity using corporate customers in this way, um, one can see why, I'm sorry, uh, our capital, but 3K is a legitimate target. But how about 6K by 2025 because of how this electric um, time shifting works and how much money it saves the customer and therefore it incentivizes those customers to switch to Tesla for this solution. So keep your seatbelts on, but I think this is gonna be very, very big and a worthwhile thing to keep an eye on. Just a reminder, please, uh, this is copyrighted telecast. Uh, use it without permission is prohibited. Uh, also wanted to encourage you, we have a few SpaceX shares. Please uh, drop us a note at, uh, or you can hit us at uh, on Tesla Fan Insight on Facebook. Just send us a private message with an email so we can respond. We also wanted to uh, encourage you to like and subscribe. Um, Beethoven, Ode to Joy. So we now move on to our health tips for today. Um, as we've, you know, one of the things we've been focused on is sort of uh, a common list. Just a reminder, do not eat more than uh, two hours before you get bed, preferably four, so the food fully digests. We also wanted to encourage you to consider a two, five or other fasting diet. And then finally, I was gonna suggest that 25 leg lifts per leg prior to getting into your day, whether there's a weight on it or not. It's good if you do a five pound weight per leg as recommended by a University of Michigan PhD from the med school there. But another uh, health tip to consider, we have a list of other health tips below uh, we wanted to encourage you to take a look at. And finally, um, we want to say, Tschüss German, au revoir French, le Hitro, Hebrew, Choda Hafez, Farsi, Strasvich, Russian, Nihao Ma, Chinese, Kambawa, Japanese, uh, Hey Do, our friends in Sweden, Good day, our friends in Australia, Namaste, our friends uh, in India, uh, Salam, uh, and we also want to say in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye for now. And we're actually looking forward to constructive comments here. Um, you know, as you know, um, we're working to improve the channel, so your input is appreciated and uh, we very much look forward to providing quality information that adds value. Have a great day and bye for now.